At the beginning of this video, I want to say to my sibling sisters and brothers in the Central Pacific Conference who are black, brown, Asian, Pacific Islander, indigenous, I see you. I am your conference minister. And what I need to say in this video is white people's work. And so this video is me speaking to our siblings, sisters, and brothers who are white in this conference. On Monday night, our white president sent his white enforcers to violently clear the parishioners and the priests at St. John's Cathedral. And then our white president went and stood on the steps of that church, held a Bible, and took a series of photos. The next day, we had the largest protests that we have had in this series of protests. White people were outraged. White people were angry. I was one of them. I identified so strongly with Bishop Buddy, who was not informed that the president would be going to her church. I identified so strongly with those white priests who were forced out of their church. I thought it could have been Salem, UCC, right next to the Capitol. It could have been First Church in Boise. Now I know some of you already have said, he's not my president. And some of you have said, why do you keep calling him white? What does that matter? But here's the thing, Donald Trump has always made it clear that he wants to be the president for white America. And by that he means the United States. And so whether we like it or not, white members of the Central Pacific Conference he is our president. And why does it matter that he's white? Because when he cleared those people and walked up those steps to stand on St. John's Church with a Bible in his hand, he was reenacting white supremacy. You see, every one of our churches is on land where people were forced out so that white men and women and others could stand on steps with Bibles This is what white supremacy looks like. This is the land we live in. And so I say, our white president did these things.
In 2015, the Central Pacific Conference declared that we were an anti-racist conference. And I'm really glad to say that at our February board meeting, the board decided that becoming an anti-racist conference should be one of our mission priorities. That if we were going to live into that resolution, then it had to be a priority. But we can't do it by ourselves as the board. I can't do it by our, myself as the conference minister. We c certainly cannot rely on our members who are not white to help us become an anti-racist conference. Our churches have been tear gassed by white supremacy. Every one of our churches. It's the water we swim in. It's the air we breathe. It's why on the night after that church was desecrated, 10,000 people showed up on a bridge in Portland, but they didn't show up on Monday or Saturday or the Friday before. I need you to help me, our siblings and sisters and brothers who are black and brown and Asian and indigenous need you to do your anti-racist work. And it needs to be the work that we do all the time, everything that we do. When you're in a book club, I need you to ask, why are we reading another white author? And I need you to pay attention to the authors you're reading. When you're thinking about casting your vote, I need you to ask, what would be the anti-racist thing to do here? When you're looking at your bylaws, ask yourself, how is this document reinforcing white supremacy? Too many of us for too long have been comfortable making resolutions Noticing when we drive by and see someone pulled over that most of the time they're black or brown and not doing anything about it. If we're going to become, we are not, but if we're going to become an anti-racist conference. We need to be all in. This needs to be the thing we do all the time. Our black and brown, Asian, Pacific Islander, indigenous, siblings and sisters and brothers. They already noticed that it was a white president who climbed those steps. We need to notice too.